Hey everybody, welcome to This Week on Homesteady. Last week you saw us, we prepared our barn for our new animals. Well, the animals are here. The delivery went really smoothly, and now we have lots of new additions to the farm that we want to introduce you to. So today on Homesteady, we're going to introduce you to the new goats, the new sheep, we're going to talk about which breeds we selected, why they were right for our homestead, and why you might want to consider these two breeds for both dairy and meat on your own homestead. So let's get started. We've had goats for a long time. Goats are a great source of meat and dairy, but not all breeds are good for both. In fact, most breeds favor one or the other. They're either a really good dairy breed, but they perform not so well on the meat end, or vice versa. After a long time of looking, we found a breed and a line of goats that we thought would fit really well on our farm. Because we are looking for dairy goats first. We want to start a herd of really good quality dairy animals. We buy our milk locally, we buy raw milk, and we love it. But with a family of five ever growing, uh, we're going through milk really quickly. And at 8.50 per gallon, it's getting expensive when we go through about a gallon every two days. So we figured one area we could do really good on our farm in this upcoming year is by getting our own dairy animals, increasing our dairy herd. But now, one of the problems with dairy goats is that every time you have kids, some of those kids are males. And those males, unless you're keeping some to breed and propagate your flock, are not really good for anything but meat. If you're growing an animal that doesn't fill out its carcass very well, you don't get a lot of meat off that animal. And so you feed and care for this animal only to wind up with small size steaks, not a lot to really enjoy. So we've been looking for a long time to find a breed of goat that would be great in the dairy end and also great on the meat end. Now what makes a great dairy goat? It depends on what you're looking for, but we're looking for good quality, good table milk, something we're actually gonna drink. We're not making soap, although we might try that, uh, but we really want milk that we can enjoy the flavor of, enjoy the quality of. We've experimented with La Manchas, we've experimented with Sanins, we've experimented with uh, Nigerian Dwarfs, and even a few mixes and mutts. After a long time, we finally came to the Nubians. We're fortunate, we have some family members in Pennsylvania who have a large herd of Nubian goats. And we were able to see the quality of animal and taste the flavor of the milk. This line of Nubian goat that we found is a large animal. It gets very big. We actually brought two Nubian lines onto the farm. We have Daisy and her two kids, two dolings, and we also have a buck from a separate line that, with plans on breeding them. His name is Spice, and he comes from Kendra's family's herd. He is a large buck, and we've seen his father and his mother, that whole lineage, they're big, meaty animals. Kendra's aunt has been raising Nubians and breeding Nubians for years to improve them for hardiness, to improve the carcass size that they yield, and to improve the amount of milk that they give. Some of these goats from this particular line will milk a gallon a day, which is incredible for a homestead goat. So we're looking forward to breeding Daisy with Spice and seeing that line develop. They're fully registered animals, we can track their history, we know how good quality they are, and we're really excited to produce a really good quality animal on our farm. We also were looking to get into sheep this year uh, because our lawnmower broke a few years back and I did not feel like buying a lawnmower. I didn't want to spend $1,000 on a rider when I could get some animals with some electric movable netting to mow the lawn for me, and instead of putting money into something that's gonna break down and become a piece of junk in 10 years, I could invest in my flock, grow it, they could care for my lawn, and I could sell meat and eat meat at the end of the year. But we didn't want to have to fleece animals because we're not getting into fiber, that's not a goal of ours. Uh, so we had to get a type of sheep that didn't need fleecing. And that kind of sheep is a hair sheep. Now there are a few different breeds, but again, you have to find out how the lines perform. We found a great line, again, 
Kendra's family members uh, have a great flock of sheep. They create what's called the Golden Cross. It's a combination of Wiltshire Horn and St. Croix. They cross these two. They say they're very hardy. They're resistant to worms. You don't have to hardly ever worm them. And most importantly for a meat animal, they grow a big full carcass. I've spoke with my butcher recently and he told me that over the last few years he's noticed a decline in the size of sheep that come into the butcher. In fact, he stopped doing lamb butchering because he said it wasn't worth his time. The animals were so small he couldn't make enough money off of them. Well, this line is producing large lambs, which is good because we intend on selling lamb uh, to our customers and putting some lamb in the freezer for ourselves. So now we have a pregnant ewe and a ram from a different line with plans on breeding them. Once she gives birth, we'll continually grow our flock uh, with that ram and that ewe. So we'll introduce you to them. Now we need some help. We don't have any names for these sheep. Uh, so in the comments below, go ahead and leave some ideas for what we should name these sheep. Maybe it'll help us. Maybe one of you will get the winning name and we'll pick it and we'll let you know next week. So let's go take a look at these animals and see how they're doing their first weeks on the farm. So we're going to show you our new goats and sheep right now. See them on home center right here. Ready? So we got five new beans and two sheep. If you'd like to learn a lot more about the sheep breeds that we brought onto our farm, there's an extra Pioneers Only episode of our podcast at thisishomesteady.com. It's in the Pioneers Only library. Become a Homesteady Pioneer. It's only five bucks a month. You'll have access to all the extended versions of these videos and the Pioneers Only podcast episodes. There's a wealth of homesteading knowledge there. And it's all yours. This is homesteady.com. So that's our whole new, our new herd, our new flock, all the new additions. It's a lot more animals. But within the last year, my job has changed a lot. I'm working from home now. I run my own marketing business online. I run the podcast, which is Homesteady. If you don't listen to the podcast yet, check us out on iTunes. Uh, so I have my businesses, which I'm running from my house, which means I have a lot more time on the farm to care for our animals. That gives us the opportunity to grow our herd, grow our flock, and be able to get more from it. That means less money spent at the store, less taxes paid to the government, and more time with my wife and my kids on our beautiful homestead. So I hope that you look at this upcoming year and see how you can find more time to enjoy life on your homestead with your family, whether it's an apartment with a little garden or a sprawling 20 acre piece somewhere in the Midwest. Until then, we'll see you next week on Homesteady.